Hello again and welcome back. This is a big old subject. I had to extend the workshop set to fit it in. It's a bit of a hearkening back to the past, this thing. It's from the early 2000s, I think. It's a Graupner Silver Spirit speedboat. And it's really old school. There's a bit of a story to why it remains so old-fashioned and unmolested, which is that about 15 years ago, I took it to a lake, played with it for the afternoon, drove home, and then realised two days later that I'd left the old-fashioned 27 megahertz transmitter by the lake. Drove back up there, the transmitter had gone, and this thing went on top of my wardrobe for 15 years until now. So, what I hope to do today is to drag this boat kicking and screaming into the 21st century by converting it not only from 27 megahertz to 2.4 gigahertz, but from a servo-operated on-off switch to having a full ESC. Let's open up the hull and then I can show you what I mean. If I just remove the top cover, we can see that the electronics are all housed in this clever Tupperware-like plastic box. I'll take the lid off that. Unplug the power supply, and there's the gubbins. What we have here is a steering servo, and then a simple on-off switch operated by this servo, and then there's a giant old-fashioned 27 megahertz receiver, and a 6 volt battery box which holds four AA batteries. Most of that's going to be coming out, everything in fact, except the steering servo. Another thing I'd like to change about this boat is this component. This is a 1 16th scale boat and I'd like to make it 1 12th scale by simply changing the size of the seats. So the only thing left in there is the steering servo. This boat ran perfectly well when it was last used so I imagine that servo is still fine. It turns out that the receiver was 40 MHz, the crowd number being meticulous about adhering to the rules about different frequencies for boats and cars and planes. And here, by the way, is the interesting little micro switch. The servo would operate that little black plunger there by my finger. Still, I've got a nice Emtronics Marine ESC for it now. Here's the old 40 megahertz receiver, and this is the modern 2.4 gigahertz receiver. It occupies about a quarter of the volume of the old one. And here we have the Emtronics ESC. Let's get the modern stuff installed. I've had no luck with my flash new Mtronics ESC. Despite having followed the setup procedure meticulously, I can't get it to work. So I've been onto Amazon and just ordered an ordinary RC car one. But I haven't been idle. While I wait for that to arrive, first of all, I've cut away the 1 16th scale seats. And then I've cut myself a couple of pieces of styrene sheet and started to make two 1 12 scale seats. Here's the interior with the plywood seats glued together. I've improvised a bit of a binnacle to mount a steering wheel higher up than the original. And while I've been doing all that, the new ESC has arrived. OK, here's the new arrangement. I'll just get the box closed up and we'll go for a test. Transmitter on. Switch on. Oh, that's a good feeling. And steering. Excellent. I realised that the driver was sitting too high in his seat and looked silly 
So I cut him down a bit lower. It does mean he's lost his legs, but when the boat's out on the water, I think it'll look better rather than having him towering up out of his seat. I've made him a steering wheel from a key ring. The spokes are cut from the lid of a tin of beans, and I've just used a three millimeter bolt to mount it to that wooden binnacle I made. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, hang on. I'll go in and get it. At the time, I just thought the boat was stuck. But when I waded out and rescued it, I soon found that, though the motor would turn, the propeller didn't. So I got home and took the motor off, and I've just discovered that the flex drive is destroyed. There's damage visible here. When it came to ordering a new flex drive, however, I was horrified to find out that Graupner, who were first founded in 1930, went bust in November of 2019. Quite apart from the consequences for me and my speedboat, I was just very saddened to hear this. It was an old and venerable company and it had done a great deal of very good work over the years. But as for the question of how I'm going to fix this outboard, my first thought was to retain the original sheath of the flex drive and replace the inner component with perhaps something like a motorcycle speedometer cable. Then it occurred to me to try using this. This stuff is the line from a strimmer. It measures between two and two and a half millimeters and it's made of very tough nylon-like plastic. I think I'll try this first. I took the coupling out of the motor and I found that it does fit perfectly well onto the strimmer cable but it's really twisty. I don't think the strimmer cable's really up to it. So what I did was go to the local motorcycle shop where I bought this steel cable and a length of sheathing for it. I'll try with that. As you can see here, the steel cable fits neatly into the coupling at this end, but at the other end I'm going to have to drill it out and epoxy the cable into place. I wasn't anticipating any difficulty at all with the next stage. To hold my workpiece square and true, I used a drill press to drill a hole, a perfectly vertical hole, in this piece of wood into which I then screwed my workpiece. I thought that would be absolutely fine, however there was one thing I failed to take into account. And that is simply that I'm drilling into a very hard piece of steel surrounded by conventional mild steel. So my 2mm drill bit wandered. In response to this disaster, I went to Amazon and I ordered no fewer than 10 cobalt 3mm drill bits. I'm going to abandon the idea of pilot drilling with a 2mm drill bit first because it was skinny enough to flex and it wandered around. So I'm going to line everything up really carefully, cut the tip off where I've screwed it up and go again. Obviously each time I cut the tip off, I shorten it and make it more difficult for the cable to go in deeply enough to grip. 
so I think this is my only opportunity to get it right now. Well, that didn't go well. There was this dreadful crunching noise the whole time I was drilling, with the sound of very hard metals doing battle, and then suddenly there was a sort of explosion, and the whole side of this thing just blew out. All I can think of to do is to cut it off and go deeper. OK, this time I drilled into the back of my piece of wood with a 10mm drill bit and was able to put a nut on the back. So that held the workpiece absolutely steady instead of relying just on the threads on the workpiece cutting into the wood and creating its own little thread in the wood. Then I dug out a pair of safety specs and put on a head torch so I could really get my face right in there and see what I was doing. And then I drilled it. This time it worked really well. We've got about 12 millimetres, 12, 13, around half an inch of depth. That's more than I could have dared hope for. Epoxy! While I wait for the epoxy to go off, I should just tell you that my claims of 12 or even 13 millimetres were a little exaggerated. I measured it, and it was 11 millimetres, but I can tell you this, I can't think of another time when achieving 11 millimetres of penetration left me feeling quite so satisfied. OK, here we have my first attempt at a flex drive. I'm worried that it might be too stiff, but it does spin. I'll grease it up, install it, and see if it works. I greased it up with Vaseline Intensive Care Lip Balm, because that's all I could find, and I've installed it, and it turns. Let's assemble the outboard and try putting some current through it. OK, moment of truth. Is the cable I used too stiff? Yep, I'm giving it throttle and nothing's happening. I think I should have used the red strimmer cable. OK, this is with the red nylon strimmer stuff instead of the steel cable. Let's try. I'm going to call that a qualified success. Next stage is to test it in the water. OK, we've seen that the motor turns, but as you know, I don't have much faith in that red nylon stuff. So before I stick it in a whacking great river, have it fail right on the other side and have to swim after it, I'm going to check it out in my mate's swimming pool. Let's see what happens. that's flat out. Yet it goes fast backwards. Not exactly a speedboat, is it? So, either the strimmer line isn't spinning freely in the sheath, or there's something up with the motor. I'll have to check. Perhaps the problem isn't with the flex drive that I've installed at all. Perhaps the motor has also gone south, coincidentally, at the same time. The best way to check is to run the motor without the flex drive and see how hard it revs. One thing I did notice in the pool was that it ran a lot better backwards than it did forwards. So, let's see if that's the case now. I'm going to go flat out forwards. 
that's very slow and now let's try backwards so the problem seems to be with the motor not with the flex drive so I knew that I needed to replace this motor I think it's just a usual silver can 550 I don't think it's a 540 because it looks quite long however my computer's broken and I've forgotten my Amazon password so I can't buy anything from Amazon on my phone so I went crazy this morning because I knew I had another one of these motors somewhere and eventually I did find it after lots of frenzied searching but it's too long it won't fit in the housing so I was very disappointed when I realized this and I thought I'd have to shelf this project until I fix my computer and can buy another motor from Amazon but then a friend came round and said I've got a motor like that in my van as I hope you can see this is actually the same size motor and what it does is it runs a little compressor you can see here a little crankshaft and there's a piston here which operates inside this cylinder and compresses air and he used this to pressurize a water container so that he had running water in his van but he happily unplugged it and gave it to me so I could use the motor in this outboard okay before I take the motor off it and change the pinions and everything I'm going to check that this motor actually spins fast enough to be of any use in an outboard I suspect it's going to be a high turn motor with lots of torque and comparatively low kV right I'm controlling it from my transmitter let's see ok I'm going to go flat out That's very low red. Although it's the right size and shape, I don't think this is the motor for us. Also, I'm kind of reluctant to kill this excellent little air compressor just for the sake of a $10 silver can motor. It doesn't seem worth it. It's such a brilliant little thing. And it was very generous of my friend to disable his van's running water supply just to get me out of a hole. The new 550 sized brushed motor has arrived. I'm going to get it installed. OK, let's try again. Brilliant. Let's see how well that does in the water. Let's see how we do this time. Well, that's good news. It seems to work again. Let's take it somewhere where we can test it properly.
I originally intended this to be a quick little video in which we changed the seating arrangements and the electronics and then spent most of the video playing with the boat. Instead, when I realised that the flex drive in the outboard had died, I was tempted just to scrub the whole video and move on to something else. Well, I'm very glad I didn't, because amazingly, a bit of strimmer cable in a motorcycle cable sheath works as a perfectly good alternative to a 35 euro Graupner flex drive. And I think the video goes some small way towards demonstrating that it's important not to give up. Do have a go, try and fix things in some unusual, unlikely way, and just see if you get a good result. Because at the end of yesterday, this boat was still working absolutely perfectly. And when eventually that red strimmer cable does go, I know how to change it and I've got plenty of it and the stuff's cheap. So, the moral of the story is, don't give up and try and fix things. You might just get a result. Either way, thanks for watching.